What's good guys? I uh, hope you're all having an amazing day. It's currently the afternoon before the tune and uh, getting up really early to go take the car out to Millsy uh, so he can load it up on the back of his truck and take it down to Cleveland Exhausts. If you guys didn't know, the RX-7 over the last couple of months has undergone some serious open heart surgery. We've completely replaced basically everything to do with this car and the way that it performs. We've changed out the twin sequential turbos for one big hypergear turbo. We've changed out the entire ignition system to get rid of the wasted spark system and then go direct. The V-mount's all been done, everything, just everything has been touched on this car. And the biggest thing is, is everything has been touched by me from what I've learned over the last couple of years working on cars. It has certainly been a massive step for me to get this car on the road. And I'm not gonna lie, I am damn nervous. <laughs> this year for me and the RX-7 has just been completely full of issues. And let's be honest, I was kind of half expecting it, literally everyone telling me that owning a rotary, there is a reason that a lot of people start to stay away from it. But I wanted the challenge and man am I happy that I did it. So you guys can see right now we're just doing a little bit of bleeding at the moment for the coolant, but the entire car is here ready to go for the tune, which I am Oh, I am so, so incredibly keen for. So for those of you playing along at home that haven't actually seen this car, this is my 2000 model Series 8 FD RX-7. It is a 13B Bridgeport that was done around about two to 3,000 Ks ago. Hasn't been running for the last six months or so and it started up a couple of weeks ago, which I'm super stoked about. But uh, we're running a Grady V-mount intercooler and radiator setup as well is a completely custom fabricated uh, single turbo setup for this car which comprises of an ATR45 SS2 which is a rough equivalent of a Gen 2 3582 with a 1.06 rear housing we have a turbo smart 50 mil wastegate down there that plums to atmosphere we've changed out the coils to AEM coils so we're not running the wasted spark anymore we're running a direct fire setup we have an FPR 800 sitting down there um, and also a few other little parts from Vinny Fab, like this little AST tank, um, which completely just simplifi simplifies the entire cooling setup. And not only that, but the biggest thing that we're doing is we are running a Haltech Elite 1500, which is going to just help this car so much. So for those of you who don't know, we are taking this car down to Cleveland Exhausts. So really, really cool. The Hoff himself is going to be tuning the RX-7 for me. I know that he's done some incredible 13Bs and I'm very excited to have him be the one that's working on this car. Uh, he has pushed around so many things to get me in tomorrow and I cannot thank him enough. Without further ado, let's go straight to the dyno. So what are you up to now, Scotty?
<laughs> well, that is correct, guys. 431 horsepower, and that's not even the coolest bit about it. So, Hoff messaged me the night before, and he's like, hey dude, so uh, just quickly, what is your sort of power goal for this car? And I told him that I was after 350 horsepower at the wheels, and I'm like, okay, all right, I'm happy with that. Um, 350 horsepower, I think, with these cars is a perfect power goal where you could rip it up through the mountains and not have any issues whatsoever. You know, really close to the peak of where sort of the trans can hold and all that sort of stuff as well. Um, and amazingly enough, one of his first runs on the first day when it got tuned, um, 14 PSI, which is like the base minimum that we wanted to go, and 14 PSI, which is the base boost that we could go with the 50mm Turbo Smart Gate. Um, yeah. We made 431 horsepower on 14 PSI, which is nothing, nothing at all. So this thing here, this whole tune is incredibly safe and I cannot thank the guys at Cleveland Exhaust enough. If you guys are looking for anything at all to get tuned in the Brisbane region, make sure to give the Hoff at Cleveland Exhaust a buzz and uh, get him a tuning car because I am gobsmacked by the tune. Um, so you guys will see in a couple of days time, um, basically you know, the car is currently sitting at the moment. Uh, the coolant wasn't bled up properly before I went, so I'm just trying to bleed up the coolant properly right now. Um, I haven't driven the car as much, I've done a few laps around the block and already I've noticed that the car is just incredibly, incredibly like responsive. As soon as you put your foot down and you're at like 3000 RPM cruising around, as soon as your foot goes down, you're in boost. It's absolutely beautiful. Second gear, the car does not spin which I am so happy about. Those Nankang uh, NS2Rs, the 265s on the rear, um, the whole setup just works absolutely flawlessly. Does not spin. I am just so to that. That was one of the biggest things that I wanted is I wanted to be out of power out of corners and not spin with this setup. Um, I'm sure if I really wanted to get it to spin, I could, but at the end of the day, doing a nice big long pull, it didn't track at all. It was just beautiful. So Hoff also chucked on a few little levels of extra engine protection because you guys do know that we went with the Elite 1500 um, and the benefit over the Elite 1000 is the fact that you still have the same amount of injector and coil outputs however you have a three stage engine protection instead of just having the single stage like the Elite 1000. So the Elite 1500, um, we've put three different stages of engine protection, but at the moment I don't really have as many sensors as what I want. I still want a coolant pressure and temp sensor, um, even though we already have a coolant uh, temp. I want an oil pressure and temp, and I want a fuel pressure and temp as well. And that way we can set up uh, those engine protection stages a little bit better. Um, I don't have any of those sensors yet. I'm going to get some of those Bosch ones and wire them all in. So that's going to be one of my next biggest points. Just got to try and find out exactly where I can tap everything into. I'm fairly sure with the fuel temp itself, I can just chuck it into the FPR 800. Um, as for coolant temp, I should be able to get a little thing that goes from uh, the bottom or the top coolant hose. So we can do that. And then what's the other one? Oil pressure and temp. I'm pretty sure these cars have an oil pressure sensor that's hidden down the back there. Uh, mine doesn't work on the dash, so I'm just going to rip that out and redo that. Um, also the thing, I have to get a catch can because you guys can see my catch can just kind of a uh, <laughs> catch can. But aside from that, I'm just making a mess with coolant. You guys all know how much I love uh, doing coolant stuff. Uh, so yes, just checking over the engine, making every, making sure that everything's okay. And it seems to be, which I'm very, very stoked about. But yes, once again, I cannot thank Hoff at Cleveland Exhaust enough for this tune. It is, it is just absolutely ridiculous. Everything about it just... It blew my expectations out the water. You guys can see from the dyno graph that the ATR45 SS Hypergear um, that we have on the car is nowhere near at its max. The turbo is just cruising at 14 PSI and it is so incredibly linear. Um, if we wanted to push this car with E85, we would see easily over 500 horsepower, which is just insane. I obviously don't want to do that because that would just make this car completely undrivable for me anyway. But uh, yes, I'm very, very stoked at this entire setup. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, the biggest thing though, I have taken this car up for a few drives now and the T51R mod is not, is not what I thought it was going to be. On a car like the Skyline, I honestly think that the T51R mod would be absolutely amazing. The Skyline idles at about just below 1000 RPM. I think it's around 900 or 800. Idles at around that and it doesn't push anywhere near as much air through the rear housing and doesn't use as much air to uh, idle and run just like the 13B does. The 13B, especially being a bridge port, idles at just under 2000 RPM and the turbo is in a constant state of trying to suck in as much air 
and it's always got that wine behind it. Now, videos that I've seen, the T51R mod is nowhere near as loud as what mine is. This has to be the loudest turbo that I have ever heard in my life. I feel like something on the 33, it would be absolutely perfect, and I would love it, um, because it would kind of have that thing where it wouldn't, it wouldn't make that noise until it got into boost, whereas this one here, even when I'm idling and taking off from lights, it's sitting there and already making that noise and then all the way up it is making that noise to the point where it just sounds like a cop when you're driving around because it just sounds like a, it's like a siren when it goes up and down. It's, uh, yeah, it's way too overpowering. Um, it was a really good idea in theory and I'm certainly not turned off by T51R mods because they do sound incredible. Um, however, I do think on this car it is a little bit overkill. We're going to go with the standard front housing on this thing, which I'll show you guys in a future video. Teo from Hypergear is already on the case helping me out get a new front housing. So for a little bit of backstory about this turbo as well, I'll go into a little like sort of technical specs about the turbo. So if any of you guys are out there and wanting to find a turbo for your RX-7 or anything along those lines, this turbo here um, is a 1050 horsepower rated turbo, very similar to like a G35 or a 3582 Gen 2, something along those lines. So it's got a 1.06 rear housing and it is a 6682 size turbo with a G35 front wheel. So, so if you guys do want this exact turbo setup for your car, it certainly can push a lot higher than what my car is right now if we put it on E85. But at the same time, this thing is just absolutely loving life on this turbo right now. Tayo has got a G35 front housing uh, coming, which is, well, the G35 front housing being the anti-surge front housing from like a G-Series. It's very, very comparable to that. Um, so that way we can sort of take away that, take away that extreme T51R sort of wine and bring it back into a nice sort of G-Series sounding turbo, um, which I'm very, very stoked about. So he's currently machining that up and hopefully we should have it by next weekend because next weekend this thing is going to be in a wedding. So before I do that I have to figure out where my coolant's going, which I'm praying is not into the engine. <laughs> and two, I gotta fix up that front cover because I do not want to be driving it 30 minutes across Brisbane with the way that it sounds right now. So a few little things I'm gonna be doing to the car um, also to make it a little bit nicer for the street. I did make this car look very aggressive. And at the end of the day, I just want to tame it up a little bit for street so I can drive it to and from work and enjoy it for a little bit. So um, I'm going to play around, especially coming back into the cooler months now. I'm going to put the standard bonnet back on and I'm going to wrap it yellow so that way it looks all nice and neat. And now that we have the single turbo and all the heat sort of freed up, we should be completely fine to run the standard bonnet now. I think that'll be perfectly fine just to and from work. Um, as for the rear diffuser, I honestly don't know whether I like the look of it just yet. It does look cool and I got it really cheap, but at the end of the day, I don't know whether I like how aggressive it is at the rear, especially now that we have that dump tip. I feel as though, I feel as though it's a little bit annoying. Not only that, but getting up and down driveways now is disgusting. I have to go on the very far side of my driveway on the grass. Um, I cannot get up and down curbs at the moment, so I don't honestly think that is going to be staying for very long. Um, as for the side skirts, they're going to be staying. The front lip, I think I'm going to be wrapping in yellow as well, just to try and neaten up the front of it. But aside from that, everything else is looking A-OK -okay and exactly where I want it. A few little things I need to do, I need to finish up those gauges up the top there. You guys can see I've had the, the can checked gauge just chilling down there at the moment, so we have to put in the coolant uh, temp sensor gauge and a few little things, so we'll be doing that in due course. But until then, I'm just gonna keep driving the car around and really enjoying it. And uh, yes, I have driven it off camera. I don't really like to drive this car on camera because it is, at the moment, super stressful to drive. <laughs> but uh, at the end of the day, I'm very, very happy with the power and everything else this car is. I wanna give Cleveland Exhaust once again a massive thank you for slotting me in so quickly and giving this car exactly what it needed. And that was just the most perfect tune. So uh, yes. Thank you to them. Thank you to all the sponsors that came on board with this car. Hypergear, Taku Garage, Motorsports Accessories, Elite Exhaust and Fabrication, and VFab. You guys are all amazing. Thank you so much for either sponsoring or helping me supply these parts for this car. It is just the dream RX-7 now. And uh, fingers crossed I can get it buttoned up. This thing's gonna have a very long and very healthy life. Thank you so much everyone for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.